In this lecture, we will learn how and why we should use a sync pipe to subscribe to an observable returned by the store. So the async pipe handles the subscription to the observable when the component is initialized and it automatically unsubscribes when the component is destroyed. So currently what we are doing is if we take example of counter value component there we know that this store is going to return us an observable. We are subscribing to that observable using the subscribe method and we are subscribing to it manually. Right here. We are subscribing to the observable returned by the store manually using this subscribe method. And then to avoid any memory leaks, we are also unsubscribing from that observable in ng destroy. Now, when we use a sync pipe, we do not have to manually subscribe or unsubscribe to the observable. That will be taken care by the async pipe. Now, how can we do that? For that, what we need to do is first of all we need to create a property which is going to store an observable so what i'll do is i'll rename this property to counter dollar and remember that when we add dollar to a property name it simply means that it is going to store an observable this is not mandatory but this is the convention that any property which has dollar in it it is going to store an observable so here this counter dollar it is going to store an observable now, what type of observable it is going to store? Well, here I'm going to remove this complete logic which we have written here. And here we will again say this dot store dot select. And here we are going to use get counter selector. Right. And this is going to return us an observable. So we want to assign this observable to this counter dollar. So here, let's say this dot counter dollar. And to this counter dollar, we are storing an observable. Now here you will see we have an error, and this error is because this counter dollar currently it is of type number. But we know that inside this counter dollar, we are going to store an observable. So here let me specify the type as observable. And in order to use this observable, we also need to import it from RxJS library. Okay, so you can see observable has been imported from RxJS. Now, what type of data this observable is going to return? If you remember this get counter selector, this selector it is going to return us a numeric value. So in the counter property of the counter state, we are storing a numeric value. So this get counter here it is going to return us a numeric value, right? So here we can say that this observable is going to be of type number. And initially we need to assign it with some value. So what I will also do is I will set its type as an observable or its value will be null and initially let me assign null to it all right and now we don't need to write this ng on destroy because inside this ng on destroy lifecycle hook we are trying to unsubscribe to the observable but this unsubscription it will also be handled by the async pipe so i'm also going to remove this ng on destroy okay and since we have removed that method let's also not implement ng on destroy here all right and i'm also not going to use this counter subscription so i'll remove this or maybe i'll comment it for now all right now inside this counter dollar we are going to receive an observable so in the view template we are using the counter property but we do not have any counter property now we have counter dollar property now this counter dollar property it is going to store an observable if i save the changes here and if we go to our application here you will see object object that simply means that what we are trying to render here it is storing an object and observable is an object in javascript so this variable here it is storing an object and also this variable it is not going to receive the value immediately because it is an observable it will receive the value whenever the observable emits a new value. So what we want to do here is we want to wait for that new value to come. And for that, we are going to use a pipe and which pipe we want to use. We want to use a sync pipe. With this, if I save the changes and if you go to our application, now you will see here we have zero and the functionality should still be working. The only difference now is 
here we are using an observable and using this async pipe we are waiting for that observable to emit a new value and whenever that new value will be emitted this async pipe will render that new value and if we go back to our component class there you see now we have very less code so it is more cleaner now right let's do the same thing in custom input component so there also let's go to custom input component ts file and here also what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this subscription from here okay and we are going to assign this observable we know that the select method is going to return us an observable so i'm going to assign that observable to a property so i'm going to change this show custom input property into an observable so i'll add dollar to it and here i'll specify that it is going to store an observable and to use this observable we also need to import it from rxjs library so we know that it is going to store an observable of type boolean because this get toggle selector it is going to return us a boolean value right so inside this show custom input property we are going to store an observable which is going to emit a boolean value or its value will be null and initially let's set it with null okay and now here let's assign the observable which this expression will return to show custom input property let's save the changes here and now what we need to do let's go to custom input component dot html and there now we have a property called show custom input dollar and this property is basically an observable which will not get the data immediately so using the async pipe we are going to wait for the data to come and what i'll do is i'll wrap this expression into a set of parentheses like this so once we have the data we want to use that data and same thing i will also do here okay let's save the changes let's go to our application and increment button is working decrement button is working reset button is working and this toggle button is also working and let me add some custom values so let me increment the counter to 4 and let's try to add 30 to it and when i click on this increment button now 30 has been added to the current value of counter all right so now instead of manually subscribing to the observable returned by the select method now what we are doing is we are storing that observable in a property and then on that property in the view template we are using a sync pipe in order to wait for the data to come and then render it in the ui and when we use async pipe the advantage is we do not have to manually subscribe and unsubscribe from that observable that will be taken care by this async pipe so this is all i wanted to cover in this lecture if you have any questions from this lecture then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day